Don't forget, plenty coming up later today. Plenty on the BBC, of course, with the Scotland-France game and also the Carling Cup final. Great, thank you very much. Billy Crystal, he's a funny man, isn't he? Very funny. He really is. I mean, no, I, I like him a lot. Yeah, good. Just checking. And the reason okay. he mentions that is? Because he's hosting the Oscars <laughs> hey. this year. He's done it quite a few times before, but he is always very well, funny when he does it. it was such a subtle link, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's a segue into these things. Uh, so some I of the really film industry's <laughs> biggest stars. I'm, I'm going on with it now. <laughs> Some of the film industry's biggest stars have been out in force ahead of Hollywood's most glittering night of the year. It is, of course, the 84th Academy Awards taking place tonight. Uh, a lot of it a bit familiar. Yes, exactly, because, as Charlie says, the regular host, Billy Crystal, is returning to his role of Oscars host. Actress Meryl Streep is up for an award for the 17th time. But there is a new twist to the 2012 awards in the shape of new Academy rules designed to clamp down on excessive Oscar campaigning. So, Tim Muffet is on the red carpet. Tim, this time tomorrow... It'll be a little bit busier. Indeed it will, yes. Good morning to you. You mentioned Billy Crystal. It'll be his ninth time hosting the ceremony, second only now to Bob Hope, who hosted it 18 times. But as you say, there aren't changes this year to the Oscars. Well, there have been, really, because every year, millions of dollars are spent promoting films and nominees, millions of dollars spent by large film studios. And there is a thought that, really, they're kind of buying attention and influence so this time round new rules have been introduced from red carpets to magazine covers oscar nominees are everywhere film companies spend tens of millions of dollars on oscar campaigns hoping to grab the attention of the five and a half thousand members of the academy of motion pictures whose votes are so important but this year, new rules have been introduced to try and rein in excessive Oscar campaigning. Normally, Oscar nominees attend special screenings of their films across town. But this year, they've only been allowed to attend two. Events where food and drink is served to members of the Academy have been stopped. And negative campaigning has also been banned. After the nominations were announced on January 24th this year, uh, a kind of wall of silence came down. There were still some limited activities that were allowed, uh, but basically uh, most campaigning was meant to end uh, once the nominations came out. Presumably, though, no one can stop Brad Pitt from attending the BAFTAs or George Clooney going on to a chat show. They're really trying to can kind of control what looks like uh, direct manipulation of Academy members. Did they have any actual effect? To some extent, it worked. We didn't see uh, controversial stunts that would have everybody raising their eyebrows. You might think Oscar campaigns are as old as the Hollywood Hills, but they're a relatively recent phenomenon. Jeremy Irons picked up Best Actor in 1990 for his performance in Reversal of Fortune. He's currently filming a TV adaptation of Shakespeare's Henry IV. When I won my Oscar, I was very fortunate because Oscar campaigns didn't happen. Um, uh, yes, of course, there was advertising and you do a few interviews and whatever, but the, this big thing which actors have to go through now uh, of going around doing um, sort of massive appearances and all of this and just keeping their name forward all the time, that didn't happen. I think it's got too much now. That's the side of the business which I don't really enjoy. It's not why I'm an actor. Um, but they think it's important, so they do it. Some Oscar traditions are unlikely ever to change. Gushing acceptance speeches, for example. Thank you with all my heart. But some believe the schmoozing and campaigning has got out of hand. And these new rules that attempt to curb them are long overdue. With me is Olivia Cole, film writer from GQ magazine. So, Olivia, do you think the campaigning's got out of hand? Uh, I don't think so. I think you have to ask what kind of films are there being campaigns run for. Take a film like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, massive studio picture, Rooney Mara nominated for Best Actress, unlimited budget, yes. But if you look at some of the films like The Artist, The Favourite, actually there has been a campaign for that. But it started out as a tiny independent movie, the same with My Week with Marilyn. Uh, so I think, yes, you have to be a little bit cynical. You don't just win an Oscar, you have to campaign one. Uh, I just ran into Jean Dujardin looking, um, you know, frankly exhausted and a little bit nervous before tomorrow. Um, but at the same time, it's also about getting films out to a wider audience that wouldn't necessarily uh, reach them otherwise. 
DVDs. And it's interesting, isn't it? The Oscars are so unique because it's not just about film, is it? It's about other industries as well. Absolutely. For the film industry, there'll be an incredible amount riding on what happens tomorrow in terms of deals and casting, but also there'll be uh, fashion public publicists and brands all over the world waiting to see what people are wearing tomorrow, whether they've managed to dress an actor or an actress, and also um, a lot of brands piggybacking the main event and wanting to host events, sponsor events, uh, get people talking about them because people are talking about the Oscars. It can make or break a designer, can't it? Because I believe Victoria Beckham is rumoured to be to dressing a star, maybe, I'm not too sure. It's so important, is it, for a designer to get a star uh, to wear their outfit? Absolutely. You know, it's uh, the film industry is like one big catwalk and pictures of actresses tomorrow are going to be in magazines and online and around the world you know for weeks to come it's an enormous um PR coup if you can get a nominee um, in something you've designed, particularly for a, for a brand that isn't, uh, that isn't on the map. You've just come from one of the most exclusive parties so far, Harvey Weinstein's party. I don't know how you got a ticket, congratulations. What's it actually Thank like then, to go to one of these soirees with, you know, to actually go there as a guest? Well, uh, slightly surreal. I think, you know, you can't be jaded about these things. I walked in, collided with Uggy the dog, the uh, canine star of the artist. Um, it doesn't really get uh, much crazier than that and um, you know obviously there are nominees here there are uh, stars uh, not nom nominated just hanging out so um, it's it's a lot of fun it is an extraordinary atmosphere isn't it and so it finally, is absolutely do, what, what, what do you think is going to be the big story of the, of the Oscars uh, I think um, it looks like it's going to be a very good night for the artists tomorrow obviously George Clooney for a long time people thought was going to win best actor for the descendants I think it's probably close between him and Jean Dujardin star of the artist but I think probably Jean and uh, Yes, we'll see. I don't think they're going to be a huge number of surprises, although possibly Scorsese with Hugo. We'll see. OK, Olivia Cole from GQ magazine. Thanks ever so much indeed. Well, I mean, Olivia mentioned surprises. Were Gary Oldman to win Best Actor um, for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, that would be a huge surprise. I actually caught up with him uh, the other day at an event here for British nominees. This is what he had to say. You played some outrageous characters in your career. Dracula, Sid Vicious, Lee Harvey Oswald, and yet George Smiley, a, a kind of... A quiet character is the one you get nominated for an Oscar for. Did that surprise you? It surprised me, but um, I'm delighted that it was that one. There are lots of other John Le Carrier novels featuring George Smiley. Would you perform in another I one? Think we're gonna, I think we're talking about doing Smiley's People. Yeah, I think Le Carre's already excited about it. So, um, yeah. You're signed up? Well, if... Uh, um, I'm in theory, yeah. <laughs> what will it mean if you do actually win on Sunday? Uh, ask me Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I will do, thank you very much. <laughs> Very tough competition in his category, including George Clooney for The Descendants, Brad Pitt for Moneyball and Jean Dujardin for 